And that's why I don't see a lot of Donald Duck cartoons on Disney these days. Fortunately for him, he had his game made well before that downfall. Quackshot for the Sega Genesis, and don't cringe when I say this, this is yet another Disney platform, but there are some elements to it that makes it a little bit different from the usual fanfare. Thank God it's nothing like, oh no, Fantasia, which I still despise to this day. Now, the reason why I'm playing this game is because of that guy on the left. That's Uncle Scrooge, and he had a wonderful game going on with him. Basically, DuckTales. And this game reminded me so much of Quackshot that I had to play Quackshot, because, jeez, you can't just... I can't skip on the good games, even if they were under the radar. Now, this game starts very much like DuckTales, where Donald just finds an extra page in a book, and he, being the lottery ticket winner of the day, steals it for himself. What a selfish prick. Luckily for him, he gets caught doing it, but it's not by the police. It's by Pete's game. Pete's game being the underpaid, overworked grunts fall for a simple open manhole trap. How could you... Uh, nevertheless, Donald, being the wonderful person that he is, decides to endanger children and piss off women. What a jerk. Apparently skipped out on dinner to find treasure. And what's he have to say for himself? Yep, that's right, 10% to... Daisy, his future wife-to-be. I really don't know what their marital status, honestly. Being the wonderful duck that he is, he just decides to fly off without launch pad McQuack. Cardinal sins upon cardinal sins. He has been marked for death by Pete's game. I don't know what to tell of this guy. He's got a lot to redeem for right now. So now that we got the map, we have a good look at it here, and we're apparently going back to Duckburg for reasons unknown. But I would suggest you go back here anyway, because it's a good way to get used to the controls, because if you don't, it's going to be a lot harder from here on. And trust me, there's some things you might want to know about this duck. Wait, what? He eats chicken? Oh, that's sick. So yeah, he, Donald's kind of a little screwy in the head. Oh my god, now he's a raging lunatic that kills anything with an arm's length. Dude, why am I controlling this guy? But at the same time, I'm compelled to keep controlling this guy because he has such a wacky arsenal of equipment and he knows how to use it. Not to mention, I just like the fact that he doesn't kill... Popcorn Shotgun Donald. Damn. Resourceful, too. So, Donald is basically armed with some really interesting gear. Plungers that stun enemies, popcorn shotguns that kill enemies, and basically a temper tantrum that's fueled by red hot chili peppers. Good news is, is that Donald has his three boys at his beck and call. Granted, he's near a flag, to calm him down whenever he needs to take a chill in the air and move on to another area. Now your first question is, why are we in Mexico? I thought this was Disney World. It could be a cop, guys. Just don't calm down. But besides questioning logic, let's talk about how the stages are laid out since that's important. You don't beat stages that you enter. You basically make the best of it and move on. That's how it works in this game. And honestly, I kind of like that aspect because it's definitely different from DuckTales even. It's really nice, admittedly, but at the same time, it can be kind of annoying as you'll start to see more and more of as we play. 
So, to be fair, I'd say Mexico is a pretty interesting place to continue your journey, because you get death pits already on the second part of this level, and you get to meet more wonderful enemies such as turtles with boxing gloves. And of course we met that guy already. I'm still trying to figure out where he's getting his ammo source. Beehives in Mexico in a desert of all places? Note that this turtle is a bit of a smartass sometimes. He likes to hide his shell until you get up close and then he just pops out and smacks you upside the face with a headbutt. Nasty. And apparently traps... Wow, usually that stuff is supposed to blow up something, not actually cause sparks to fly and burn your feet like that. But I'm not gonna question this logic, or at least try not to. Because there is a lot of wacky things that this game will throw at you, but at the same time it has a nice curve to it so it doesn't challenge you too badly, or at least forces you to do some really crazy ass things that you will be as pissed off as Donald when you're done with it. <laughs> That's why I like this game, it's definitely got a lot, a lot of style to it I would say. Not to mention the enemies are not the you are definitely not dumb definitely have a bit of cleverness to them. Ah, so we now need keys. So first we need climbing gear, now we need keys. Okay, I, I'm fine with that. Ah, crap, I feel like I've met that guy somewhere. Well, we'll think about it later. <laughs> now the thing that sh you're probably wondering, what's this third area? If we just went to Mexico, we gotta go to, like, frickin' Spain now, right? Nope, the map says something entirely different, honestly. Transylvania! Wow. Seriously, we've been here, like, three different times in three different games. But we get greeted with the wonderful world of bats. God, why are they back in this game? More importantly, you might want to know about this technique, the sliding technique. It's very handy. You're going to be using it a lot more than you think. And while Donald does take a page out of Mega Man to copy this wonderful ability, <clears throat> it will help with your uh, movement speed on the ground for one thing. And it definitely keeps you down low, which is always a plus. So, don't forget about it. Because you're going to need it anyway. <clears throat> now, Transylvania definitely has the aesthetics going here with the creepy forest in the background and Dracula's castle yet again. Man, I swear, Disney really likes Dracula. Or castles. Or talking go- what? Are you sure we're not in a haunted house? Donald, dude. Okay, so while I'm just taking in the scenery here and trying to put my mind back at ease, we need to head back to Duckburg for a couple reasons, because we need some civilization again. Not to mention I need to figure out exactly what I can do next here, because I don't have a, a bubblegum shooter, which I definitely need, and I don't have gear to climb a wall, and I definitely don't have a... wait... <sighs> damn it, I'm dumb. Forgot, the explorers. They have the damn hero key. Oh, Donald, you sly dog, trying to con this poor man into giving him the key. And he does. Wow. Didn't know there was that p people that easy to fool. So, Donald gets some wonderful key. And we can now make some trails back to Mexico, because we I know exactly what to do with this key. And I am so glad that you can just warp to that flag at like a continue point, because back going through this level again would be kind of annoying as hell. Um or you can open up for Alright, use the key. Okay. Welcome to the first dungeon of the game, guys. This is where the game starts to throw a few new loops at you, essentially. And you're gonna really have to be careful in this particular dungeon. Because while there's not a lot of death pits, there are a lot more traps and a lot less baddies with goodies, basically. So you're gonna have to watch that step or three. 
good news is is that this is not incredibly long, but the bad side is you're gonna have to know that there are no continue points. So if you fuck up, you fuck up. Now, one thing you must know about these blocks. As you can see, jumping on them, not a good idea. Jumping on them after freezing with your plunger, great idea. And I do kind of like the whole Metroid Ice Beam action here. I mean, Samus hasn't been refer referenced even by Nintendo for a while, but this game definitely knows where it's coming from a bit. Not to mention, it actually makes good use of these stunning plungers. You're actually using them to keep enemies from killing you while you jump on top of them. Grand doesn't work with everything, but I do like the whole idea. But besides that gimmick, I do like the whole layout of this dungeon. For one thing, you have more of an open-ended adventuring kind of aspect as opposed to the usual Disney fanfare left to right of uh, killing enemies along the way and it's straightforward. This actually kind of forces you to use more of the game's other mechanics or to and mainly to use your head to maneuver through the entire dungeon. That I do like because for one thing, uh, you don't exactly get that kind of aspect with Disney games. You just kind of play through a level, bear with its obstacles and the frickin' bats in that one location, and you basically just make it through, hopefully, or else you will have to do this whole dungeon again, and I doubt that you do. Also, you want to be careful with the sliding a bit, because if you just hammer down the B button thinking, yeah, it's going to work out for me, you could very well end up in that position I was in. So try not to be so hasty. Just make sure you're actually doing the command. Holding down and pressing B. That's pretty much how it is. And I just love how Mega Man is just getting a nice little cackle at this whole thing. It's like, yeah, I done I had these abilities too, Donald. You have to understand you're taking some elements here. Now I'm really hoping there's not a boss at the end of all this because Goofy. Goofy. Why are you here? Why do you look like you're on vacation? And what do you have to say for yourself? Um uh, yeah, sure, why the hell not? So, Goofy is what I would like to call this game's Des Ex Machina, because, for one thing, Goofy has just appeared out of all random places to grant me with this information and some items. How the hell does he know Gyro is in Duckburg and is looking for Donald? However, I will not slouch on the item he gives you, because Jesus Christ, the red plunger is a vastly improved, big improvement over the yellow plunger. And now, the bad news about this dungeon. As you can see, I'm frantically running around for a reason. It's because I'm trying to find a way out, and the way out is the way you came in. Backtracking! Yeah, have fun with that idea. Let it sink in a bit. But hold on just a moment. Oh, if you would be so kind on the way out, collect these, or just get them on the way. I don't know if points matter, though. Now, if you barely got your tail fetters intact after getting back track out of the way in that dungeon, just be glad that if you have one or two health left, or even four, the boys are also top-line chefs, and they will give you an in-flight meal that will actually restore your health up to the normal five bars. Thank God, boys. You are a lifesaver. I don't think even Launchpad could do that. Alright. The rooftops. This is where you get a nice little dose of the red plunger attack. And traps that you would like to probably erase from your mind shortly. These loudspeakers are trying to kill you with noise pollution. I don't understand how the enemy is considering this as a logical idea to kill a duck. But it's working, unfortunately. So you're going to have to bear witness to booms being your worst nightmare in terms of traps you can't really see right off the bat. So 
make sure to look before you leap in this case, because you could very well be on the sore end of death if you don't shape up. In fact, all I would just, just suggest is to pay attention to your surroundings or else this crap could possibly happen. You could possibly end up in a death pit, thinking, yeah, I can make that jump. You're going to need to use the plungers here. That's all I'm going to just tell you right off the bat. If you think you can just get through f with a few plungers, no. Abuse them as much as you can to just help yourself through this level. However, don't get too greedy thinking, yeah, there should be a secret area like in that dungeon that I just went through. The game's not going to be that generous if you're diligent with the plungers, because, uh, seriously, there's some limitations. Besides, why the hell would you want to climb up that wall anyway? Now, the last thing I want to talk about is this area. This is where the game starts thinking, oh yeah, you remember the Honeymooners? You remember that the electricity runs through these wires? Yeah, so you're gonna have to play a little bit of transfer from, I guess, wheel to wheel in this case, and you might get rewarded if you're really quick all the damn time, but just transfer. Just focus on making your jumps count here, because if you don't, dead. Easy deaths here. Hey, Gyro, why weren't you like a normal person waiting down on the street corner to give me this? I mean, up here in the rooftops. And what is your obsession with bubblegum, dude? I know that you're really famous for making that oxygen bubblegum and all that, but dude, exploding bubblegum? What if you were happen to drop that stuff and have some guy's foot blown off? because of your lack of concern with this product, but to be fair, I'm kind of glad he's giving it away, and god, I have to freaking backtrack again. Luckily, in this case, the backtracking's not as bad, because the game's thinking, yeah, you probably got really sick of it back in Mexico. Here's a nice one-way ticket back without any jumps or any deaths involved. Thank you, game. I'm glad you're considering our well-being. Now, when the backtracking is all said and done, be glad that you don't have to do much more of that. And, yes, if you're wondering an answer to a question, what happens if Donald gets on the plane with a full bar of health? Will he apparently get airsick? No, Donald actually keeps all of his health. So, be glad if you have eight bars of health, you'll keep those eight bars. It's a nice little bonus that I have to appreciate a little bit, but... Clearly, we have to head back to Transylvania, because this wall ain't gonna blow itself up for us. And I have a hunch this ghost is gonna frickin' tell me the obvious. Why game? I get it. This is a scary place. Yes, I get- Oh. So, is Donald actually gonna talk with this ghost? Well, I don't think we have too much time to explore this place, so next time we're gonna meet Dracula, kick his ass, take whatever means necessary to take the map from him, and possibly see if we can find this damn treasure. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and adios. I said adios, Donald. <laughs>